So moved. Second. Mr. Benthausen? Yes. Mr. Staff? Yes. Mr. Uti? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Good news this evening. We are going to honor our September 2023 Student of the Month for Piatone High School. I'll have him come on up. It is an honor to recognize and bring before the board September's Board of Education Academic Student of the Month, Landon Ham. Landon is the son of Kent and Kristen Ham of Piatone and is currently a senior at Piatone High School with a grade point average of 4.0 on a 4.0 scale. He is a member of the football and basketball teams, a member of the National Honor Society. In his spare time, he enjoys working in the family business, Hambro's Detailing Company. And after high school graduation, he would like to attend a university for engineering. <laughs> Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, anyone want to get in the photo? That is our only good news portion for this evening, and you are welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting, but we are going to continue on with the business portion and our opportunity for visitors to speak tonight. Um, Mary Beth Rains. My turn? <laughs> Already? Yes. Hi, I'm Mary Beth, and I came to uh, support your teachers who were brave enough to speak out against attempts at book bans in their classrooms. Uh, make no mistake that these attempts were book uh, banning attempts. Removing books from classrooms and reading lists because a small minority doesn't like them is the exact definition of book banning. District 207U and all school districts must enforce their reconsideration policy and stand behind the decisions of the qualified teachers they hire to teach students. If the district does not yet have a reconsideration policy approved by this board in place, now is the time to implement one. Um, it will be required for the state of Illinois funding going forward and will help protect them from and possibly um, prevent further censorship attempts. In the Piatone Bidet article from 831, the book challenger mentioned in the alleged agenda that teachers are, quote, pushing down on our children. Having worked in school libraries for 28 years, I can assure you that the only agenda teachers have time, energy, and approval for are, is for educating your children according to the ISBE and District 207U. It's a difficult job to teach 30 students from different backgrounds, home lives, and learning abilities, all of whom have a million different issues affecting their behavior and mental health every day. Your teachers have no time to push any per personal agendas, and they certainly would never be allowed to do so, to get away with doing so. The three titles mentioned in the Bidette article, Night by Ellie Bizel, Monster by Walter Dean Myers, and Speak by Lori Halls Anderson, are books commonly seen on reading lists across the country and universally considered modern classics of YA literature. Knight is included in high school and middle school curricula across the country. It is the definitive, definitive book about the Holocaust, written by a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Eighth grade students from the middle school from which I just retired have been reading it for years, and it remains one of the few books that affects students strong enough to make them want to visit the library looking for more books by the author. It's descriptions of the author's real life experiences and feelings are hard to read, yes, but so very important to teach younger generations how critical it is to make sure that nothing like that ever happens again. Monster highlights the injustice that is still pervasive in our society 24 years after the book was published. This title is especially important for Piatone students to read because it opens a window into an unfamiliar world that they may never have seen anywhere other than on TV or in movies, urban city life. 
It has multiple themes in a distinctive format, making it an excellent choice for discussions and writing prompts, both of which help to create students who can think clearly and critically. Speak is probably my favorite of the three under debate. It depicts um, realistic high school behaviors and experiences, describes how a student loses her voice figuratively and literally due to trauma, and, finds a, and how she finds a way to recover through art. <clears throat> she uses her voice to stand up for herself and speak about what happened to her. I witnessed this title flying off a bookstore shelf, proving that students want to read it. This powerful book should be required reading in every high school, in my opinion. Calling these books, quote, disgusting, vile filth, can only come from someone who did not read them in their entirety. Pulling pieces of the story out of context from the books and describing them as filth is not fair to the authors and does not convey the themes, messages, and knowledge to be gained through reading the whole work. I'm sure the gentleman requesting these bands is aware that students have access to much more damaging and questionable, questionable material on their phones, on the internet, and on TV. At least while reading these books and discussing them in the classroom, their powerful scenes can be explained and discussed, led by a qualified teacher or a librarian, and ultimately make students think for themselves, feel empathy for someone who is different from them, or highlight injustice and prejudice, and understand why we must work to erase them. Our civilized society depends on it. The protesting parent mentioned in the newspaper that he expects an apology from the teachers. However, thank you, Mrs. Ryan. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Bowden, you wanted to speak during the working cash bond portion, or do you want to speak now? I want to speak on a working cash bond. Do you want to speak right now, or do you want to speak during that hearing for the working cash bonds? We have to open a special hearing inside of this meeting, so you can either speak now, or you can speak when we're talking specifically about the working cash bonds. I'll wait. Okay. All right, for our FY24 budget hearing, I'll entertain a motion to open the FY24 budget hearing. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Show the budget hearing open at 6.08. Uh, Mr. Fulhensio. Yes. While it is already included in your monthly report, we do have to disclose the cash balances per 105 ILCS 5 forward slash 17 dash 1.3 as of August 31st, 2023. Are there any comments from the superintendent? No, ma'am. Any comments from the board? Any comments from the public? I'll entertain a motion to close the FY24 budget hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Show the FY24 budget hearing closing at 608. The next item up will be the public hearing concerning the intent of the Board of Education to sell $10,900,000 worth, worth of working cash bonds for the purpose of increasing the working cash fund of the district. I'll ask for a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. The public hearing is now open at 6.09. Any comments from the board regarding the hearing any comments from the public any comments from you mr. Stein? No. mr. Bowden I'll turn it over to you I know you had mentioned you wanted to comment during this time all right regarding the sale working cash bonds for the following projects <coughs> blue devil drive reconstruction section of blue devil drive located on park district property is in very poor condition. District 207 bushes, buses use the drive every day. I believe it is fair that 207U tear out and replace a section of the drive. Piatone Elementary heating system. The heating system of Piatone Elementary is old and unreliable. It needs to be replaced. In both of the aforementioned 
And since this 207 board is fulfilling its obligations to maintain the education facilities of the district, in both instances, the assets are being replaced out of necessity. The third issue is the baseball softball fields. To begin with, three points that emerge. <coughs> I begin with three points that emerged during the May 23 meeting between the Piatone School Board and the, and the Piatone Park District. <coughs> Item one, who was responsible for the care of the softball and baseball fields used by 207 U teams but owned by the Park District? Item two, there was a con <coughs> commitment to continue discussion and form a committee to recreate an IGA between the taxing bodies. The last IGA expired in 2004, 19 years ago. Roger Bettenhausen is the third, third item, was Roger Bettenhausen suggested 207 build their own fields and stated, that's going to be my push. His proposal was to create a baseball, softball, and soccer complex with press boxes, bleachers, precast concrete, dugouts, concrete walkways, batting cages, set scoreboard, flagpole, complete with concessions, restrooms, and its own parking lot at the high school. Unlike the road and heating systems which are being replaced out of necessity, Bettenhausen's grandiose project duplicates facilities that are already available. The 5200000 cost does not make sense, but Bettenhausen has been instrumental in in and voted for since the spending in the past. A purchase of 27 acre site with a principal and interest cost of $2,183,000. Sale of Wilton Center School for $10,502 without an appraisal or use of a realtor. Paid approximately $80,000 in unnecessary real estate taxes. The expensive and unrealistic Bettenhausen proposal exists because the 207 and Park District Boards did not follow through on their commitments to continue discussion on who were responsible for the care of the fields and form a committee to create a IGA. Issues to be negotiated and <coughs> included in the IGA include, one, cost of maintaining the fields, Park District basketball programs that are that use Connor Shaw Gym. Men's basketball uses it two nights a week year round. Hotshot bas Baseball, a new program for four to seven year olds, will be using it seven Saturdays in October and November. The school district does not charge Park District for either program, observing the cost of utilities and insurance. Men's basketball charges. On the Sunday program, 10 to 15 players, $50 for a three-month session. On Tuesday program, 10 to 15 players, $50 for a three-month session, which if <coughs> 50, that's $1,500 per session for three sessions a year. So that's $4,500. Hot shot, there will be 40 players. And they'll spend, if you live in Piatone, it's 60 bucks. If you live outside of the city uh, village limits, it's $75. The $60 program would cost, <coughs> would, they would take in $2,400. The $75 program, they'd take in $3,000. Barter with the park district, do not load the 5200000 Bettenhausen program onto taxpayers. Conclusion. I ask that each of the programs be evaluated separately and voted on separately. Mr. Stein, any comments regarding the working cash funds? No, ma'am. I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing at 614. So, so second. <clears throat> All those in favor, aye. 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 The public hearing is now closed. Action item number 14 is the approval and adoption of the district's FY24 budget. I'll entertain a motion. So. Uh, move to approve board number 14. Second. Mr. Benton Yes. Mr. Staub? No. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. 
Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Report number 15 is the approval of the district's FY24 administrator straighter salary compensation report. We'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Staub? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Report number 16 is approval of the district's FY24 teacher salary compensation report. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve report number 16. Second. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Staub? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Report number 17 is the approval and adoption of the second reading of the Press 112 board policies. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve report number 17. Second. This is Mr. Robinson. Mr. Yes. Robinson? <laughs> yes, if that's so me, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Mills? Yes. Mrs. Lowe? Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Robinson? Yeah. <coughs> Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you. Mrs. <coughs> Becker? Uh, yes. Peter? I'm done, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, got us, I got us off track. I was using focus. Uh, approval of the third additional sponsored uh, position and stipend for the PES STEM club. Um, I'm just going to quick, Mrs. Zoralis, do you want to give a quick little synopsis on why that's needed? Yeah, so we um, originally wrote the uh, description for two sponsors for two eight-week sessions. Last year we had so much interest that it was necessary to add that third person um, so we could serve 36 to 40 students each session. And this year within the one week and one day we um, had 51 second and third graders interested in our STEM club. So that's still with an additional third sponsor. We still you know, need to make it manageable. Um, so, you know, still having about 40 students for this first uh, session and just being able to let them explore science, technology, engineering, and math. So um, there's a lot of interest in this club. All right, report number 18, approval of the third additional sponsor position and stipend for the STEM club. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Stodge? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Bell? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Lowe? Yes. Report number 19 is approval of the dispute resolution. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mrs. Lowe? Yes. Mr. Staub? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Report number 20 is approval of the Piatone Elementary School Improvement Plan for 2023-2024. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve report number 20. Second. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Stallman? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Mrs. Moe? Yes. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Report number 21 is the approval of the hazardous stop resolution. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Stop? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Yes. Report number 22 is approval of personnel. There are no addendums this evening. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve. There, 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 there was one, it was in your packet. Um, yes. Well, I'll entertain a motion to approve report number 22 with the, the addendums. addendums. Yes. Move to approve. Second. Mrs. Love? Yes. Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mr. Bettenhausen? Yes. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Uthie? Yes. Yes. I'm going to circle back around and I apologize because I, is it Siobhan Beard? Yes, that's me. Hello. 
Hello. So my name is Siobhan Beard. I'm a parent of a former student that was here um, last school year. Um, I had to pull my daughter out of school due to racism, bullying, and things of that nature. Um, we have been here before uh, other parents as well uh, to discuss the issues here at Piatone that we've had. I uh, pulled my daughter out. Um, and ever since I pulled my daughter out, stuff has been crazy. It's been, I, I had a terrible summer because her life has been shook up. You know, um, even this upcoming school year, it's like um, she's going through the motions. You know, she's having a really rough, you know, due to the, the racial um, things that happened here at Piatone. Um, I guess mainly today what I came for and what I wanted to find out today, um, I'm not sure who specifically, but you, are, you guys are the board. Um, what is being done to resolve the racism that's going and the bullying in Piatone District? Like what is being taken care of so that none of these actions are um, ever, like basically so that none of the kids want to, you know, you basically so that you fear even doing it. Like I know I have consequences for my children at home. When they do certain things, you see one kid get up in trouble for it, so you know you're not gonna do it. You're not even gonna play with me. So that's what I'm looking for for the school. Like it's no actions being taken on behalf of the school to make other children uh, fear doing certain things so they don't get in trouble. Um, like one of the things I noticed uh, after dealing with everything that I've been dealing with is when you go to Joliet Central's handbook, student handbook, there's a bunch of consequences. Not just for sexual, not just for racism. It's a bunch of consequences. You're gonna get expulsion, suspension. But when I go to um, Piotone's handbook, it's like a hundred and some blank pages for them to just fill in stuff. And there's no consequences for their actions. The only thing that they're getting in trouble for is sexual, you know, but it's nothing about racism and it's more to it than just sex. You know, uh, even the last meeting that we had back in uh, August, uh, August the 21st at the last school board meeting, one of the parents, Roxanne Manny, she was even asking, what is gonna be, what's being done to help with the diversity so that, it, so that it's a zero tolerance? Even if it's not a zero tolerance, you know, what's gonna be done? It's no consequences for anything. And yet each of us and, um, have to take our kids out of school. We have to have to pay for um, private school. So private school is over 15,000, over 10,000. Um, we got to commute 30, 45 minutes away. That's going and coming. So these are all expenses. If I pay my taxes, I don't want to have to to, to do all of this. This is a lot. So it's like, what is being done? You know, that's, that's, that's all I wanted to share with you guys. Cause like, I, you know, it's like at the last meeting, it was no response. Like, is this, is that the same thing at this meeting? There's no answer. There's no response with anything. Mr. Stein, did you want to go over some of the things that have going on I know there's been some assemblies and yeah some I mean I did I did too. respond to Roxanne I did send her an email regarding the questions that she had posed to the board and generally that's the that's the give and take at a board meeting as a business meeting um, you know one of the things I will say and and I've I think you've been in some of the meetings where we've discussed some of these issues um, you know we're, we we have started a DEI club here at the high school we want to work closely with that DEI club along with the No Place for Hate program that we're starting at the junior high and the high school with the um, Anti-Defamation League. So we're getting those programs off the ground. Um, and I think the most important component that we need to move forward with is education of students. Now I know people want to say that there's no consequences. There, there have been consequences for students who have broken rules at school, whether it's bullying, whether it's racism, whether it's sexual in nature, mm -hmm. there have been consequences for those students. I can't go into the specifics of those consequences, and those consequences may not be what parents were hoping they would be of the students who were impacted by those things, um, but I can't go into details, just like I can't go into details talking about students' medical records or anything along those lines. 
Um, but I assure you, we are taking these things seriously and we are putting things into play. Those two programs being one. Tonight, Mr. Owens, uh, before, the, uh, uh, before the board meeting, hosted the first uh, uh, meeting of the Climate and Culture Committee for the district. So that is something that we're going to be working toward as well. Um, we did have, I believe, a very good uh, person come in and speak to the students during the first week of school, Dr. Don Parker, um, talking about his experiences with racism and how it impacted his family um, and how it impacted his life. So we, we are going to continue to make steps to provide education to our students. As uh, the lady in back, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but the librarian who mentioned you know, the importance of reading some of these novels to give our students experiences that they might not necessarily have. Uh, and having someone like Dr. Parker come in to share his experiences provides an experience for our students to have through someone else that they haven't had in their life and hopefully can learn from that as well. So we continue to you know, put those things in place and we'll work to add additional things to our curriculum throughout all of our buildings. Um, but in terms of consequences, you know, we, we have to look at the context of what happens in a situation. Um, I, I can't speak to the Joliet Township High School handbook. I haven't seen it. I'll definitely take a look at it. Um, I don't know if it's a lockstep sort of thing where if situation X happens, then consequence X happens. I, I don't know, but I will take a look at it and see, you know, what the comparison is to what we have here at Piaton. Yeah, yeah, because of, um, if you look at those two, you'll see it's really no comparison mm -hmm. at all. You know, it's not just, uh, it's not just specific, you, not only is it specific, it's even <coughs> broadened a little bit, whereas Piatone is really like nothing, okay. you know. So that's all I have to say today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Administrative reports this evening, <coughs> Mr. Stein. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> first, I, I did have one FOIA uh, <coughs> from Janine Asmus, um, and she was looking for the personnel in the district who are qualified uh, as media specialists slash librarians, so I provided that information uh, to her. Uh, I did let the board know earlier that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm battling a little something here, so I apologize for the frog in my throat. At the Park District meeting on September 12th, uh, the Park District did approve the conveyance of Blue Devil Drive to, uh, to us, to you as the Board of Education. So I will be working more closely with Barb Sim, uh, their board president, on the surveying results that need to be done prior to our board moving forward with any needed repairs. Um, and then obviously there's going to have to be, uh, once that survey is done, that marker is gonna have to be moved so there's gonna be some legal issues there with drawing up a new plat uh, so I will be working with Mr. Fester uh, to make sure that that happens in a timely fashion so that when working cash bonds are sold, uh, the architect is ready to go to start planning that project for you know, probably late spring, early summer of 2024. So then that's ready to go when buses roll in August of 2024. Okay. Uh, I would like to, uh, you know, there was an action item in there for personnel that uh, accepted my retirement from Piatone School District. I would like to thank the Board of Education uh, for now my 11th year here at Piatone. I believe we've gotten a lot done in those 11 years. Uh, we've had some ups and downs with uh, things that have taken place, but overall the good always outweighs the bad. Um, it's bittersweet to be moving into a new phase of life, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and I'm very, very happy by the fact that we have three outstanding administrators that we are able to move into new positions. Uh, so I'd like to congratulate uh, our new superintendent starting July 1st, 2024, Mr. Brandon Owens. Congratulations, Brandon. I would like to congratulate Mrs. Zoralis, our PES principal, who will be moving into the assistant superintendent position that Brandon is currently holding as director. Um, so congratulations to Carol. And I want to congratulate Mrs. Bean behind the camera over there, uh, moving from 
assistant principal at Piatone Junior High School to principal at Piatone Junior High School again starting July 1st, 2024. Congratulations. <laughs> Obviously, I will be working closely with all of them as we uh, do this transition, uh, most closely with Brandon. Brandon will also be working with Carol, uh, and obviously Mr. Wenzel working with Mrs. Bean. Um, I see this being a very seamless transition, and I know that the school district is in absolutely wonderful hands, uh, and I look forward to watching the changes that they will bring from afar. I think it's you know it's the it's the best situation that you hope for when you can promote from within and with Mr. Stein retiring and Mr. Wenzel retiring and Brandon moving on from his role um, I think the board is very proud to have had three strong internal candidates be able to fill those positions so we're excited and we got another year to get through and I know that seems like it's a long way off for now but it's it's nice to have that transition piece done and set and uh, well, I'm sure we'll revisit that a number of times over the next few months of but course. Um, so and we will uh, we, I can't even tell you the things that we've done over the last 11 years uh, with it's Mr. been a whirlwind uh, some, some of the things we, we always say it would be funny to write a book because you'd never believe some of the things that have actually happened so um, we're lucky to have had you um, always at everything for 11 years, I think you know people know you're the superintendent, but they don't have any idea that that is a 24/7, 365 job from the minute the buses roll to the minute they come in to employee concerns, teacher concerns, student concerns, board concerns, community concerns. It is a um, never-ending job, and you've always handled it flawlessly and with extreme professionalism. And we were lucky to have had you for as long as we did. Thank you very so, much. I appreciate that. And I hope you have a great return. I certainly do. <laughs> Thank you. And that was all I had. Well, Adrian, what are you going to follow that with? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the auditor has completed the FY23 audit. Um, at the last year, believe it or not, last year at the October meeting, Mr. Benhauser requested that the board have a, receive a copy prior to the October presentation from the auditors. Um, hot, off the, hot off the press, each board member has a copy of that audit. I have barely taken a look at it myself. Um, so, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, John Nicolesco will be at the October board meeting to present. Uh, school maintenance project grant Illinois has issued another round of $50,000 dollar for dollar matching grant um, so we will be meeting with the building and grounds committee to assess our current capital needs and make a recommendation to the board at the October board meeting uh, for them to approve the project uh, the LAA trustees approved uh, an additional monthly assessment charge of $33,000 and some change. Um, that dollar amount was in this uh, check run, so the board approved that, so that will take care of October, and it, it will be in each uh, check run that the board approves going forward um, for the next 12 months. Uh, and yes, and it, it was built into the budget. Uh, I think I mentioned during the budget presentation that uh, we had a contingency built in, um, uh, so it is built in there. And then uh, we have our credit rating call with Moody's Investor Service on Friday. Uh, so we can expect to hear back from them on October 6th. And uh, Mr. Stein, Mr. Owens, and I uh, have prepared with PMA for that call. And that is it. Quick, quick follow-up. Sure. The $50,000 grant. Yes. Will projects that are already in the pipeline qualify? No. No, we can't. Uh, no, unfortunately no. New almost superintendent Brandon Owens. Do you have a report tonight? I do. Yeah. I, um, Don't be lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, see what I can do. Uh, as Mr. Stein alluded to, uh, we had our first advisory committee on district climate and culture uh, earlier today. Uh, we just mainly it was our very first meeting that we had. We went over our expectations and roles uh, for this position. We looked at some demographic data. Uh, and then we began the process of discussing and developing a survey that we would like to send out to students, staff members, parents, community members as well to just get a kind of a, a 
a view on the climate, the heartbeat of, of the district on, on how we all view how things are going and things that we can focus on uh, moving forward. So we're looking forward to, to getting that process going and getting input from everybody um, to really kind of at least be able to have some discussions on, on things that we can work on or things that we can improve and any, any we may have things that are going fine that we, we still want to seek ways to improve. So that input will be instrumental. Uh, we greatly appreciate uh, once that comes out, if we could have as much input as possible, uh, we, we would really appreciate it, but that should be coming out here in the coming weeks. Uh, last week, we officially opened our preschool playground on Monday the 18th. Um, we had a ribbon cutting ceremony. We had some parents come out and some kids who got to run around a little bit before uh, school started that day. It's really awesome to, to have that fenced in area now. It was on a, on a, a hold, hold for a while with just a snow fence, but we finally have it all enclosed. Uh, it's great to have that opportunity to get them outside, to running around, and to have uh, you know that decision on, uh, unfortunately we've had some rain here going on the last few days or so, but uh, really excited to have that opportunity. Uh, just as a side note too, uh, as we send information out, uh, families of little ones, they have the opportunity to use the park as well, as long as it's not during the school day. So if it's after school or over the weekend, you can bring your little kiddos there. Obviously not like your 14 year olds, but uh, your little kiddos, that would be perfectly fine and great for them uh, to be part of it as well. It's, it's for them as well. Uh, the math committee, we're, we're, this year we're reviewing K through 12 math curriculum. Uh, it's going to be a, a giant undertaking with, with just how many individuals and, and the amount that, that we'll be reviewing at this point right now. Um, we are in the process of just setting up those teams. I sent out emails and I'm getting feedback right now and, and in the next few days we'll have that group established with our expectation of, of meeting in October. I'm really hoping that we'll have an opportunity to meet in depthly over the next few months so that we can have an idea at least on one or two materials to bring in the spring where we could even pilot them and get a little bit more ongoing practice where they've had a little bit of involvement of using the program. We do at times run into issues at the start of the year where there's a little bit of hangups on things um, about you know unsure of how to get a student roster or those kind of setups. Well, this would allow us to kind of get those things out of the way and at least have that familiarity with, with whichever program we're going with. So that's something that we're looking forward to. One last statement, I'm, I'm going lengthy, I'm sorry. Um, at next month's board meeting, uh, we will be recognizing our students who exceeded on the IAR assessment or received a five. Um, we have, uh, there are almost double the amount of uh, fives that we had from last school year. So um, I think we were, we were in the mid-teens, mid to upper teens, and, and we're closer to, to 30, um, at least with this group that we have moving forward. So really exciting to see. Other than that, again, I just, I just again, wanna, wanna thank you all for the opportunity for next school year. I know, like you said, it, it's a while from this point right now. We're focusing on the things of the school year, but um, I'm really grateful to have that opportunity to be able to step to the role, the confidence uh, that you have for me to, to take over. I'm, I'm very appreciative of. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Stein for just uh, the conversations and, and the support that we've had, um, you know, our, the relationship that we've built, built over the last few years. And, um, you know, I've, I've learned a lot and, and I've, um, I, without repeating again, just, just really, uh, really excited to have, have that chance to step into that role and, and to, uh, you know, discuss and, and create, create an atmosphere that's supporting all of our staff and our students. We're excited to have you. It's not nearly as much fun to sit in Mr. Stein's seat, but you can do it all, right? So, Mrs. Zorales. Yes, all right. It has been a really busy month, but fun month at PES, as always. Um, we did a behavior training camp at the beginning of the year. Um, we had our AIMS web testing and Pontus and Pinnell testing, which then led us into our grade level data days. Um, we determined our students for reading, math, and behavior interventions, which began last week. And we also uh, remember 9-11 by inviting our local uh, police and fire department uh, to receive cards from our students. As mentioned last month, our school-wide theme uh, this school year is One School, One Goal, and our goal at PES is home base. B, behavior supports. A, academic growth. S, social-emotional learning. E, encourage physical well-being. And at our back-to-school assembly, we announced our cross-grade level league colors, and leagues are working together to earn trophies in these uh, four different areas throughout the year. And the green team is definitely bringing the competition. So maybe some of the staff members that are on that team. But we kicked off our Start With Hello and Homecoming Spirit Week um, today. Um, we brought back our Motivational Mondays. We did this 
two or three years ago in May, um, but we're going to be doing Motivational Mondays, the last Monday of every month, and today we partnered uh, with the PHS football players, cheerleaders, dance team, and the band to greet our students uh, to kick off again, uh, start with Hello Week, and we always love this collaboration that we have with the uh, high school for special activities like this. And we have a busy, fun week uh, for our spirit week, but also tying in resources from Start With Hello. It's a national program teaching students empathy and empowering students to end social isolation in three easy steps. So that's all for PES. I also do have a technology update tonight. I've really enjoyed getting to work with the tech department this past month and gather feedback from our district staff uh, via Google Forms and doing building walkthroughs regarding the technology uh, needs of our district. And a tech support schedule was uh, created to allow the tech team to support in all district buildings two to three days a week, right at the beginning of the day, kind of when we see those troubleshoot things needing to happen. So there is that support now um, at the beginning of the day. And again, I am so uh, humbled and grateful for the opportunity uh, for next school year. Um, and I can't wait to continue to serve all our students and staffs and family and community. So thank you. Well, we're excited to have you too. And as you guys probably caught from that, um, Carol has taken over early um, the tech it has kind of always fallen under uh, the curriculum department and Carol has stepped in and kind of taken over that a little bit early kind of transitioning that piece so thank you for doing that and we look forward to again it's going to be this year is going to go quick we think it won't but it will so uh, we're excited to have you both on board and with that I'm actually going to go to Wendy next because I usually forget her because she's behind the camera but also um, you know we're lucky to have had Wendy in our district and then as the assistant principal behind Mr. Wenzel who's retiring and we feel lucky to have her be able to step up and step into that role as the principal starting next year. She's already doing a lot of those tasks in her <coughs> job now so I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you and I look forward to the opportunity. Um, a little bit at junior high, um, we have already wrapped up baseball and softball seasons um, because they start so early. Cross country is still going, um, they have an ISA regional meet on October 7th and that is at the Round Barn Farm in Manhattan so they have a few more weeks. Um, we have just started girls basketball. Um, sixth grade team is off to a good start at 3-1. and one. Our seventh grade team moved to 4-0 and oh, and our eighth grade team probably 3-1 <laughs> as we were leaving the building so everybody's off to a really good start. Um, upcoming before we know it boys basketball uh, will start the week of October 16th and cheerleading tryouts are Tuesday the 3rd and Wednesday the 4th from 3.30 to 5 at the junior high. Uh, and then I just want to highlight last Friday we enjoyed our first um, junior high dance. Um, outside, weather cooperated once again beautifully. Um, it's very nice out. Um, so we are in the back U parking lot from 6.30 to 8 um, with some lights and a theme of um, haunted house. Um, so thank you, big, big thank you to the parents and staff that helped us out with organizi organizing our decorations, um, doing the decorating, and then chaperoning as well. Kids had a blast, and it was a very good night. Scott, I'm going to throw it to you since oh, you're... I give her all the exciting stuff. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, hey, you could just say pass now well, that you're in your yeah. retirement year, just pass. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. So just the, uh, the beginning of the year stuff, just the things we talked about, haven't had a chance to come back to is that, you know, basic stuff. We ran off through our drills, our disaster, our fire, our lockdown uh, drills. We uh, thank you to our PE teachers, Mr. Carpenter and Ms. Bryant, for doing our bus evacuation drills on the day at the gym. Won't miss the bus for the day. Um, we also got our fire drill in. It was nice to work with the fire department uh, with them it's on September 15th as well. Uh, we get our fall map testing, we, we had our data days, our interventionists are in, uh, going at it. We, uh, you know, got the names of the students we see that need a little extra help and provide that help for them, which is wonderful. Um, I will say this, it was very nice on the 15th as well, which is our SIP day. Um, uh, we were able to get together our departments 6 through 12 and do a little vertical alignment. Uh, uh, the, the team leads in each building kind of put together agenda and it was nice to sit in and listen to a few things that they were discussing again to see how we can make those connections 
from sixth grade all the way through 12th grade. Uh, uh, of course, I went and sat mostly in the math because I have that love, and it was nice to, to hear those conversations. It was really good. And I, I think most of the meetings that day yeah. were very successful. And for some of it was just getting to know the other people in the department because okay. there's a lot of new faces every year. So that was a nice thing. So things coming up for us is our SI classroom will be doing their first uh, community outing uh, for life skills this Friday, or not just Friday, but Friday, October 6th. Uh, they do a lot of uh, our aluminum recycling down in Nelson, so we're going to take a trip down there and learn a little bit about that. And then also a lot to watch that day as far as that goes. Uh, we did have one jumping back to the 22nd besides the dance. We did have an uh, image group that our student and staff pictures for the yearbook that day. Uh, Mrs. Shuby will be hosting with the Anderson Book Fair uh, for our junior high students. It will take place October 9th through 13th with the family night being October 5th. She does a wonderful job always putting that together. And the other big thing we've got coming in up for our music, our band and choir students, is the Campbell Conference will be doing their music festival, which will be held at uh, St. Anne Grade School on Thursday, October 12th at 7 p.m. So we have a select group of kids, uh, choir students and band students, that go over there and every conference in the school has their select few and they get together. There's guest conductors and everything like that that they get together about noon, they leave after lunch and they practice after after lunch when they get there to about three or four o'clock. The school feeds them dinner and then they perform have a performance that night. And it's a really, really neat thing to see all those kids come together and they, within a span of four hours put together a a a, a, a musical uh, thing that just provide some good stuff. So I lost my words there. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yes, that's a good, always a big event. So, awesome. but I'm very well. Amy Adamo. Okay, don't kill me because I'm reporting out. For All right, I'll get you. Got, you got two stars. <laughs> it's okay. Take your time, no pressure. <laughs> uh, so, this month, our counselors are starting to meet with um, each class and each grade level to just kind of prepare them for college and career readiness and life outside of high school. Um, our student support team is going around to BDS periods, just introducing ourselves and all the resources that we have um, available for students, including mental health. Um, we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month this month. Um, last week we did some trivia and facts in the announcements. Um, this week we're playing music in the hallways, and then we have some activities planned for the remainder of the month as well. Um, Mr. Diaz has been offering students some Mexican candy, so they've gotten to try that in his class. Um, Spanish classes are doing a variety of activities. They're, use, they're doing a music bracket competition um, and research projects about influential Latinx um, people. So we have some really cool stuff going on. I'm looking forward to the rest of the month. Um, our Renaissance Club is doing a few new things this year. Um, they're surprising teachers with treats for their birthday. Um, they have some plans for October, some activities that they want to do with the teachers. And then they've taken over the nomination process for uh, Teacher of the Month. But thank you to the Game Off for their continued support with the gift card. Um, we also participated in Motivational Monday with PES. So we had our band, cheer, football, and dance go over there to welcome the students this morning. Even though it was terrible weather, they did a great job. Um, and we also just wanted to thank our athletic programs for all their help cleaning up the Will County Fair. Because we know that that's a huge undertaking. Um, fun stuff, this week is homecoming. We walked in today and all the halls are decorated beautifully for our Through the Decades theme. On Wednesday, we have our powder puff game at 7, and the buff puffs will also be performing. Uh, Friday during the day, we have our Junior Olympics and Mighty Muscles. Um, Friday night, we have the football game versus Mantino, so we better win. Um, the parade is also on Friday starting at 4, so it will lead us to the field. And then the dance is on Saturday from 7 to 10, and tickets can be purchased online. Uh, dress up days this week. Monday was anything but a backpack day. We took a risk and let students do it. And <laughs> It turned out really well. The kids did a great job. Um, it did not become a disruption at all. I saw people awesome. carrying out microwaves. And one, one yes. girl had a fridge and a, yes. and a Ford, like, great <coughs> for a yes, grill. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it was a lot of fun, and the kids, I think, really appreciated being able to do something different. So that was a good day today. Tomorrow's Twin Day. Wednesday is Class Color Day. Thursday is Class Distinction Day. So the different decades of music. Um, and then Friday is Blue Devil Day. And then we want to thank Mr. Robinson and Stu Collins who's still here for all of their work and effort that they're putting into making this a great homecoming week. So everyone's excited. It's a high energy week. Um, just some athletic extracurriculars up updates. Golf um, is completed their season. They finished third in the conference tournament. Um, we had two students receive all conference recognition, Jake Earhart and Joe Hasse. 
They'll be playing in the IHSA Class 2A Regional on Wednesday. Um, Cross Countries, they've been in numerous competitions and invites this fall, and they recently completed their senior night. Soccer, um, they just took third place in the Rivals Cup this past week and weekend, um, and they're currently 11 and 4. Volleyball just finished third at their Watsika Invitational this weekend, and they're currently 6 and 10. Um, Tuesday, October 3rd is our Panichi Cancer Awareness Night, so we um, encourage everybody to come out and support. They're raising funds for special spaces, which helps children with cancer create the space of their dreams. Um, football is two and three and looking to make a playoff rush over the next few weeks. Cheerleading and dance have also begun. They're off to a great start. Um, Mr. Forlenza is working really hard with getting the band prepared. Um, the musical, they're working diligently to practice for Legally Blonde this year. Um, many clubs are up and running at the high school, so we're looking forward to the work that will be done, and there are plenty of opportunities for students to get involved. Um, and then just on the horizon, our Boilermaker games that are October 3rd at BBCHS. Um, our special needs students are very excited to compete and bring home some new awards this year. KACC field trip for sophomores is October 12th. ICE Leadership Conference is October 18th. And juniors will take the PSAP NMSQT on Wednesday, October 25th. Awesome. I know that's a lot, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but that's for two people. You so did great. This is, done. You great. <laughs> this is to Kala. Okay going on at Pick as well. Um, well. We had our new photographer come out this month. We had our picture day on the UT, um, which is Image Group. They did a great job. Pictures were done in record shot, uh, time. We had some parent volunteers come out and assist, and we look forward to getting our proof soon. Uh, we too had our data days. Pick teachers spent the afternoon on SIP day on the 15th reviewing our fall benchmark data. We're all committed to meeting our students where they are and providing them all the support they need to grow their greatness this year. Um, the therapy dog is back at Pick. Bela is our favorite dog. And Bela was back at the Pick Dog House on September 21st. We missed him during the dog days of summer. <laughs> um, Start with Hello Spirit Week is starting this week too. PES and Pick are both doing that this week. Um, so that's throughout this week. Uh, today was hat day, we're going to have a comic book day, a wear green day, he told pride day, hmm, there's one more and it's not coming to my brain right now. Mrs. Flanagan, what's the other day? Oh, you got me. I know. Jam and Jam. 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 Um, so that's all coming up. Additionally, um, our social worker, Ms. Henderson, will be working with students on a little handprint project and talking about Start With Hello in when she sees the students this week. Um, also, shout out to our PTO. Um, myself and Mrs. Zarellis hosted um, the September PTO meeting at PES, and the PTO discussed upcoming events and funded some projects specifically to pick. They funded um, 24 for this year, Game of the, game of the Month, uh, games, some shirts and tie-dye for a spring project we're going to do, and also um, gave us a, a nice amount of money toward our field trip to Irons Oaks. Our fifth graders are going to Irons Oaks and Olympia Fields this month, and they uh, helped fund that field trip. So thank you always to our PTO. They always support us. Awesome. Chris Crawford. Yes, we had um, 157 work orders in the month of August. Um, to go along for 177 July, I'm going to keep a uh, yearly total. And also our summer projects got done, the gym painting, the high school got done, um, kind of shop playground got done, like Brandon mentioned, the only thing we had going on still is to pick uh, temporary power and AC. You know, that, they're actually going to come in over the Columbus Day weekend to try to get a lot of those uh, units installed. And so they should get a lot of that work done hopefully that weekend, and we'll see when the rest of stuff comes in. So. Are those work orders, do any of those carry over, or are those all brand new work orders for each Those are brand new for the Brand new, okay. What did, you, what did you have the total for the year, you said? Did, did um, I for, for, I gave one for last year, last meeting, this year for two months, 334. I'm running it for the, like, run our year six. Okay. The last month, I think it was 2,000, something, maybe last year, 3,000. Okay. It was three, it was, it was over 2,000. Okay, thank you. Uh, who else do I have? Terry. Nothing really to add, just getting in the groove, you know, normal. New it's, it's good when Terry and Jen are like both yeah. smooth. Jen looks like <laughs> things are smooth there too, that's good. That's a great start. Yeah. That's good. And that's thanks to everybody that helped us too. 
the PS staff, all the staff that helped out at the junior high couldn't do it without you guys. So thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. I'd just like to say briefly, too, that Mr. Yuki and I had an opportunity to meet with some student body before our meeting, and we uh, took away some, uh, some, some things to think about and some discussion items that we're going to meet again with regard to some of the things that are going on um, at Piatone High School uh, that have been spoken about from Mrs. Beard and some of the other students. So um, I know it's all hands on deck, and I think it's, sometimes it's tough to convey that. Um, here in a meeting and to kind of just pull it all apart and make it about discipline which it really isn't it's about education and how we can get students to understand that and not just be punished for their behavior but understand why that behavior uh, is unacceptable and how that behavior makes other students feel in all different kinds of categories whether that's racism or bullying or just being a shy quiet kid or somebody who's not necessarily a joiner. So we're going to continue those discussions. I know uh, Rick and I both felt like we left that meeting with some food for thought, and I think that will be a positive, uh, positive relationship that we've established there. Lots of good things going on in the district, obviously, as you heard. Um, it's a busy school year. It's going to be here before you know it. I don't know if any board members have any other. A lot of, a lot of thank yous, and I just want to thank Adrian for getting us to us a month ahead of time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, our park district president is back here, Barb Sim. I want to thank her for oh, park district cooperation. I think we had a very productive meeting a couple months ago that led to this agreement. So, yeah, I didn't even see you back here, Barb. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to say. Yeah. yeah. Nothing to say. Nothing. Okay. I have a great board behind you, such as you guys did. So, I'll pour it on my board. We're we're excited to keep working together. We have good things coming, so it's it's going to be it's going to be good. Yes, definitely, Adrian. I'm excited to read more good comments about you in our our little packet here from the auditor. I think last year you had very very high marks. I'm going to be looking at that as well. Um, Debbie, did you have anything tonight? Anything else from the board? I, I had a few comments from Mr. Bowden, but saying how the high tail with out of here, I'm going to not take those. <laughs> I think I think that's. Mr. Right. Bowden has had a grudge against me from the first day I served on his board. <laughs> and I, frankly, I, I haven't paid attention to him for the last 20 years. And maybe that's why he's here tonight. I don't know. But, and also, I'd like to just ask uh, administration, you know, perhaps you know, take a look at Joliet Central's handbook. Sure. I mean, yes, maybe, absolutely. Maybe that's an easy fix. I mean, it sounds like they've been able to get rid of all racism and bullying in their school. So maybe, maybe that's an easy fix for us. Take a look. All right, board members, if you did not sign the budget um, documents, I need you to sign that before you leave. Um, anything else this evening? All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.